starts right now. And making news overnight, a local Pizza Hut employee is shot while trying to leave the restaurant. We will have the latest on her condition. Health experts are warning that the current crisis unfolding in New York City could be a preview of what other states will soon face. I'm Inez Delacuatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. Live cam giving us a look outside. Looks pretty clear out there right now and a little bit cooler. We'll check in with Mike and get your forecast. And we're talking to Mike about some fog issues. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is March 31st, about to wrap up the month. Take a deep breath, everybody. Take a deep breath. Mike is talking about some fog issues we've had overnight, but if I understand things correctly, Mike, things appear to be improving. Yeah, as we speak, as a matter of fact, uh, some of the, the Facebook posts and pushes, I haven't even had a chance to update those because counties are being deleted from this as this front moves on through here, and that's bringing in a little drier air, and so that's why it's a little... I like that. Yeah, it's going to be a really, really nice day today. Oh, good. Today and tomorrow are going to be very nice, right around uh, 80, plenty of sunshine, and lower humidity. So out there by the airport, yeah, by the airport, um, everything is looking pretty good. Visibility is fantastic, except going off to the west, Port SA, and then Castroville, Hondo. So a lot of thick fog also down around Pleasanton. And then uh, off to the east, Gonzales and Victoria, you still have a little bit of fog. The only counties that remain in the dense fog advisory are Uvalde, Medina Frio, and Atascosa up until 6 o'clock. And I wouldn't be surprised if indeed these are also the lead in this dense fog advisory is canceled, perhaps within before it expires at six o'clock. Um, there were some counties up along the I-35 corridor, including Bear County, and that was just, like I said, just deleted from this dense fog advisory. 63 right now in town, some 50s in the hill country, and we've got wind coming in here out of the northwest, and so that's uh, pulling in that drier air. A little bit cooler temperatures with the mostly clear skies, and so I think we'll drop down a few more degrees and bottom out right about 60 here in town. Oak, if you didn't see it from yesterday, it went up by leaps and bounds from the previous day. So we're up around 31,000 right now. Hopefully that's going to come to an end one of these days because oh, a lot of folks are suffering from oak pollen. 70 at noon and then 80 at 5 o'clock later on this afternoon. Like I said, low, lower humidity. Really, really nice day. Northwesterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Got some pretty good rain chances coming in here to finish up the week going into the weekend. Details on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. And Mike, we got to talk. Fog, oak pollen, come on. <laughs> just, just the messenger <laughs> right now as we get right now as we focus we take a look at the roadways you can see uh we uh it's just very early right now no accidents let's take a look at trans guy what's waiting for you we're up there by the airport 281 410 just a couple of vehicles there down on the east or westbound lanes and uh, a couple of vehicles up on one of the connector ramps moving over to 410 at morrison road down there on the south side no problems there for eastbound or westbound lanes and i-10 crossroads also uh, less than a handful of vehicles that i-10 to callahan you can see eastbound lanes uh two three vehicles one truck headed on towards those connector ramps for 410 in each direction so right now not too bad just don't forget once you get out of the roadway put away those distractions and actually focus on the driving it's really easy for you to just kind of let the mind wander when there's no one out there for you to slow you down. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. We have a look at the latest numbers as Bear County continues its fight against the coronavirus. 168 cases now confirmed, many of them, though, travel related. Six people have now died, but we're also seeing a new number of recoveries. Out of the 168 cases, 44 people have recovered. The six fatal cases included five women and one man, and we're told that man was in his 50s with underlying health issues. The city of San Antonio has released a new interactive dashboard that makes it easy to track and view coronavirus cases in the area. The dashboard provides people with a detailed breakdown of information about COVID-19 cases in an easy-to-understand format. The interactive tool shows the latest information on the total numbers of cases, deaths, and hospitalizations in Bear County. Also breaks down the cases by and deaths by age group, gender, and source. You can find it right now at ksat.com. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump is now saying challenging times are ahead for the next 30 days. Doctors and scientists on this team warn we still have not yet seen the worst of the outbreak. Here's ABC's Inez de la Cuatera. Some of, some of the horror. Overnight, a New York you Governor Andrew before. Cuomo with a grim here. warning. This is unlike anything you've seen before. You'll see it increasing, uh, and you'll see it everywhere. New York is just first. 
Cuomo calling on healthcare workers around the country to come help out if they can as New York City becomes the epicenter of the U.S. outbreak. We've lost over 1,000 New Yorkers. To me, we're beyond staggering already. We've reached staggering. Hospitals overwhelmed, the U.S. Navy hospital ship Comfort pulling into port, and a field hospital now up in Central Park. Meanwhile, on the other side of the country, Los Angeles also expecting a spike. In Louisiana, the governor there says the state is just days away from running out of ventilators and bed capacity. And in Michigan, Detroit is converting this convention center into a 900-bed hospital. At least 37 states now telling people to stay home. Dr. Deborah Burks of the Coronavirus Task Force telling NBC, If the metros and the rural areas don't take care now, by the time you see it, it has penetrated your community pretty significantly. President Trump boasting one million tests have now been completed, even though in terms of per capita testing, the U.S. is still far behind South Korea and Italy and now showing off a new five minute testing kit. The numbers have been incredible on testing and we have something from Abbott Labs, which is right here, and that's a five minute test, highly accurate. And the president also announced Ford would begin building ventilators, teaming up with General Electric to produce 50,000 of them in 100 days. In de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. Australia, right? New this morning, San Antonio police say they're looking for a man who shot a Pizza Hut employee as she was trying to leave her job. Happened just before midnight in the 14,000 block of Nacogdoches Road. Police say the female employee was trying to leave the restaurant when an armed man shot her in the stomach and robbed her. The woman was taken to the hospital in stable condition. And this morning, police are working to find out who shot a man on the west side. It happened in the 8,000 block of West Military last night. Officers say the man was shot in his leg. It's unclear if the man was shot while he was in the car or where he was found or dropped off there. Right now it's 437. We're at 63 degrees. As more and more people are being told to stay home, a pastor is now under arrest after ignoring state orders and continuing to hold church services. Hacked church services. And next, the number of COVID-19 cases continue to rise. The market is not phased. We'll have more on the Dow's upward trend. And live cam giving us a look outside. Mike says we're in for a beautiful day today. We'll have details coming up. In your morning headlines, three federal judges have blocked orders that limit abortion access during the coronavirus outbreak. The judges ruled against restrictions placed in Ohio, Alabama, and right here in the state of Texas. The states placed the limits on orders banning non-essential medical procedures. The states argued procedures like abortions dip into limited medical resources, but all three judges went against the orders after citing that delayed abortions could eventually make the patient ineligible for the procedure. Legal experts say that places an undue burden on a woman's right to choose, making the restrictions unconstitutional. The rising death toll from COVID-19 isn't slowing down Wall Street. All three indices will start in the green today after gaining more than 3%. Johnson & Johnson was the big winner, surging 8% on news and hopes to begin testing a coronavirus vaccine in September. The Dow gained 3.2%. The S&P 500 picked up 3.4%. Despite overall gains, energy stocks lost big. Oil prices crashed to an 18-year low, closing at just above $20 a barrel. New York's Empire State Building lighting up for emergency workers. The building's signature white lights replaced with red lights to honor all those on the front lines in the fight against coronavirus. The building also fit off a music to light show synced to New York's iconic theme song, Empire State of Mind by Alicia Keys. Empire State Building's Twitter account says it will shine with the heartbeat of America through the ongoing pandemic. Beautiful. 441, 63 degrees. Still ahead more on a pastor who was under arrest after refusing to stop holding church services. And next more on an effort to help local artists that have lost revenue due to coronavirus concerns. Welcome back to Time Now's 444. Well, most states have issued some restrictions on businesses, business and travel because of the pandemic, but many are ignoring the warnings. A Florida pastor under arrest after refusing to stop holding services. ABC's TJ Holmes has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, quarantine revolt. 
A defiant Florida pastor arrested for openly, blatantly violating a ban on large gatherings, continuing to hold Sunday church services. It's not about a, a virus. It's about the church being a essential service to the community. Pastor Rodney Howard Brown of the River Church in Tampa is accused of ignoring local stay-at-home orders, encouraging hundreds of parishioners to show up. Even live streaming the church service, you can see Brown preaching to a room full of people, most of them shoulder to shoulder, in total disregard of the CDC's six feet social distancing guidelines. We'll have much more coming up at 7 a.m. Plus, George Stephanopoulos goes one on one with the commanding general of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. With your GMA First Look, I'm Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. With a lot of big events canceled all over the city and bars, music, venues, and art galleries closed indefinitely, many local artists are struggling. But as Stephanie Cerner reports, Luminaria and the city of San Antonio's Department of Arts and Culture are working together to help these artists with lost revenue. Jaime Ramirez is a part-time music teacher, a church piano accompanist, a musical theater director, and he also does a lot of side work for local singers and bands. So right now, most of that work is on hold. All the theater work, I had a, a show at the Woodlawn Theater recently that I was music directing, and it's, it got postponed. Luminaria and the city have put together the Corona Arts Relief Program to help each artist with $600 during this time when so many people are out of work. We know that in this time when places like the Tobin and theaters and nightclubs and galleries are all closed that the artist has lost their performance opportunity. An executive director of Luminaria, Kathy Armstrong, tells us that the Arts Relief Program just started accepting applications last week and already more than 100 people have applied. As for Jaime, he tells us he's okay for right now, so he's spreading the word about the relief program to his fellow musicians. A wonderful singer in town, Azul Barrientos, that I play with, and I tell her, you apply for this. You know, all her work is music and performance space. They are your dancers, they are your poets, they are your visual artists, your sculptors, your performers, and they are the people who really bring a lot of life and creativity and culture to the city. And so to read these stories of great need, it, it is heartbreaking. Stephanie Cerna, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's 447 on your Tuesday morning. It's time to check the roadway, see if there's any traffic trouble to be aware of. Well, right now as we take a look at the roadways, the uh, map void of any incidents on the highway, so uh, still looking very well in that respect. However, watch out for some construction here in the downtown vicinity. Now yesterday we had it on the northbound main lanes of 35 here in the downtown area. Today it's on the southbound lanes, so giving everybody their fair share with the uh, cone zones there. I-10 at Crossroads, you can see east and westbound lanes, not too bad. Let's take a look. 2 to 1 at Grayson North and Southbound lanes, running smoothly, so you would think, ah, pretty good drive, no problems. Well, that's 604 Kulota, and that little hint that you see there gets worse at I-10-1604. So just depends where you're at for the moment. Hopefully, it won't stick around too long. Just remember, low beams, not high beams, reduce that speed and increase that following distance. Thank you, Marcus. What you got there, Mike? Well, yeah, I love this picture. I was, I was looking at that fog, first of all, but look at this one. Aww. We can take that fog. It's kind of a lonely picture. Yeah, it is. Obviously, he's not by himself, but way out there in the far northwest portion of the hill country. I love that shot. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect picture. All right, uh, as far as visibility out there by the airport, I mean, it's a whole different story than what Marcus just showed out there on the far northwest side of town. Now, we still have the dense fog advisory in effect up until 6 o'clock for just literally a handful of counties. It was um, it, a lot more counties had been deleted from it, and it did include the I-35 corridor and I-10, but now it's just Atascosa, Frio, Medina, and Uvalde counties, and I wouldn't be surprised even if this is canceled prior to it expiring uh, in the next, uh, what, hour. We have visibilities down to about a quarter mile, Castroville, Hondo, a little bit around uh, Port SA. Now you go up toward Bernie and it's very good, but right there, 1604 area, there was still some of that leftover fog. So watch out for that. There's also some fog well off to the east. Uvalde right now is down to zero visibility. So we've got some drier air, which is moving on in here in behind this front. Temperatures were still on the mild side, 63, but 50s, uh, even hello to said 55 right now. Same thing up the road, Bernie, 53, Kerrville, and this drier air, which will continue to filter on in as the wind shifts around to the west to northwest in behind this front. So as far as uh, 
Sky cover today, cloud cover, not much of anything. We've got just uh, basically mostly sunny skies. We'll have a couple of clouds hanging around here throughout the day tomorrow. And then more clouds as we go on into uh, Thursday and, and some rain chances will start to move on in then. But here comes this drier air and so dew point temperatures which are up in the 60s from say about San Antonio off to the southeast are going to be dropping down. So it's going to be really, really pleasant today. We are going to see like I said, lots of sunshine, comfortable temperatures, and with the drier air in place, that's going to allow temperatures to drop down into about the mid to even some lower 50s, perhaps even upper 40s in parts of the hill country tomorrow, and then a nice warm up. But like I said, with a few more of those clouds around here, and then once we get past tomorrow, humidity is going to come back into the picture and really stick around in through the weekend, and that's going to help to feed those some rain chances. So once we get past tomorrow, Rain chances will definitely start to ramp up. I think they kind of peak on Friday, but we'll still have a couple of more showers and thunderstorms even through the weekend. Today, 70 at noon, mostly sunny skies. Really, really nice day. Wind out of the northwest at about, uh, about 10, 15 miles per hour once we get into the afternoon hours. And we'll top off just about 80 degrees. Low humidity, a really nice day. Tomorrow, pretty nice as well. 79, I think a few more clouds, even though we will have um, a cool start around here, a lot of sunshine, but more clouds as the the day rolls on, especially into tomorrow night, and then a couple of showers around on Thursday. Better chance of rain Friday. We'll still have a few showers Saturday and then Sunday once again and even Monday. So hopefully, you know, we've got what a good five day stretch there where there's some OK rain chances. So hopefully we get some pretty good rain, you know, good soaking rain those days. We need it. Watch that pollen out. Oh, yes. oh yes. <laughs> exactly what I'm thinking. I can't stand that oak. It's killing me this it year. It is so. everywhere yep. right now. We're at the peak. All right, thank you very much, Mike. Right now we're at 451, 63 degrees. Coming up next, gone but not forgotten. Following his death, country music legend Kenny Rogers is back in the top 10. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick 3008 with a fireball of five. Daily four numbers 8444, fireball three. And your cash five numbers, 12, 13, 22, 25, 34. Texas two-step five, 19, 20, 35, with a bonus ball, 12. Another Hollywood star with Texas Connections is asking people to stay home and stay safe. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. It's the sound of the shutdown. People digging the weekend big time. His new 80s influenced album, After Hours, debuts at number one on the Billboard 200 album chart with the best sales plus streaming week of the year, according to Billboard. It's the weekend's fourth chart topper in a row, and this song, Blinding Lights, is also number one on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. And following his death, Kenny Rogers is back in the top 10 with the best of Kenny Rogers. Through the years, hitting number nine, marking Rogers' highest charting album since 1983. Grammy winning singer songwriter John Prine is in oh, stable yeah, condition. That, according to his wife, he was hospitalized in critical condition over the weekend and placed on a ventilator while battling coronavirus in New York. Prine's wife's message Monday suggested his condition had improved. She thanked fans for sending their love and asked that they sing his songs. Let's join the fight by staying home. Matthew McConaughey, the latest Hollywood star, asking people to stay safe and stay at home. He's out with a new PSA, urging isolation, and says with all of the bad news, he's also seen a lot of good. You see people helping out the least vulnerable um, in ways that maybe they weren't before. Um, you see a lot of more compassion, you see a lot more resilience, responsibility. And happy birthday today to Ewan McGregor, the Star Wars and Fargo star is 49 while Oscar winner Christopher Walken is 77. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And all the million things Christopher Walken does, he's now best known for needing just a little more cowbell on Saturday Night Live. Oh, that's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Right now it's 456, 59 degrees. Still ahead with COVID-19, medical equipment is in short supply. How a local group of creative minds in the fields of medicine, math, computer software, and architecture are working to develop emergency ventilators. Plus, because of the pandemic, the capital murder trial of an accused cop killer has been postponed indefinitely. More on what's next in the case. Live from Case at 12, 
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, Governor Greg Abbott set to update the state on efforts to slow down the coronavirus here in Texas. And the capital murder trial of a man accused of killing an SAPD police detective is now on hold indefinitely. And outside with live cam, we've had some fog in the area overnight, but things are improving as a front makes its way through. We'll leave the details to Mike. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is March 31st. Thanks for being with us this morning. Dust off that umbrella. You may need it over the next couple of days. Mike, how are we looking today? Well, actually pretty good. Now, there's still a little bit of leftover fog around the area, but it has been continually clearing out. Of course, the dense fog advisory was issued late last night, but counties have, have continued to get deleted from that. There's only a handful left over. And as you can see in this picture, everything looks pretty good out there by the airport looking off to the east. Now, there are still a few spots heading off to the west from uh, 90 where we've got some uh, fairly thick fog. Although the number in Casterville has improved, Port SA is now up to uh, 10 miles visibility because it was down to uh, about three or less than that just last uh, half hour. Uh, still a lot of fog around Hondo and then Uvalde. That's actually come up just a bit and Gonzalez has some fog. Now, as far as dense fog advisory, the only counties left under this advisory are uh, Uvalde, Medina, Frio and Atascosa. And this is until six o'clock this morning. And the way things are going, I wouldn't be surprised if this uh, dense fog advisory, if more counties continue to be deleted or if it's even uh, just allowed to or canceled, I should say, before uh, six o'clock this morning, we'll still keep tabs on that. So if you're going out 90, just to be on the lookout for some of that uh, thicker fog temperature. Now we're down to 59 here. So as the drier air moves on in here, slightly cooler air, that's allowing temperatures to drop down and it's really, really pleasant out there except if you are an oak sufferer because oak is just ridiculously high. I think we need to change that from very high to have a category that says ridiculous. Uh, the update account, of course, is going to be coming out in a couple of hours. And as far as the rest of today, some patchy fog left over, then it's going to be clearing on out. Mostly sunny skies, a really nice day, 80 for a high temperature with that lower humidity, wind out of the north to the northwest at about uh, 10, 15 miles per hour. Pretty much the same story tomorrow and then Thursday, that's where we're going to see the rain chances move in here. They will increase, especially kind of peaking, I think, on Friday, but we'll still have some rain chances going in through the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. What's going on out there? Well, Mike, uh, you were mentioning earlier just how the fog was uh, here and there and actually moving out. And then we showed a camera that uh, was still kind of lingering. That was just a few minutes ago. Let's take a look at I-10, 604 again. No more fog. Just a few minutes and everything's cleared up. So hopefully that's the way your commute will be. Nice and clear with no obstructions. Just remember, focus on your driving. Put away those distractions, those cell phones, and those coffee cups. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. Governor Greg Abbott is set to give an update later today on the continued COVID-19 response in the state of Texas. So far, over 2,800 cases have been reported and 38 deaths have been confirmed. The governor will speak at 2 o'clock this afternoon at the state capitol. We will be streaming the update live on KSAT, KSAT.com, and on our streaming app. Abbott will be joined by the Texas Department of State Health Services Commissioner and the Texas Education Agency Commissioner. Well, what was expected to be a busy election season is now having to hit pause in light of the harsh reality of COVID-19. Well, that means postponing almost all of the municipal and school board elections, as well as a handful of primary runoff races that were set for May. Municipal and school board elections that were coming up next month will now be part of the November 3rd general election. That is pending approval from the governing entities if they haven't already made it official. Ventilators are a big deal when it comes to caring for the more serious cases of COVID-19. There are 650 ventilators in Bear County with nearly a dozen being used right now to fight the illness. The concern is a spike in cases and could lead to more of a need. So a group of creative minds in the fields of medicine, math, computer software and architecture are in a race against time. They're trying to develop emergency ventilators. Can Opener Labs is a prototyping and development firm. The pandemic prompted them to shut down and volunteer to make medical related products that are in need like face shield masks and now ventilators. The whole goal was to make it in a way that could, these could be rapidly made and rapidly deployed. So they're actually they're actually now water jet cut out of aluminum. I would call this our fifth prototype at this point. Uh, we've had a uh, functioning model, uh, s uh, several several functioning models and uh, we're, we're uh, hopefully assembling this one and have it ready to work in, in a couple hours. 
The prototype will be presented to the University Health System Review Board the next few days. The group also in talks with the FDA to seek emergency approval. They say it could only cost a few hundred dollars to make. Wow, I love hearing these good stories, these positive ones. Well, this morning, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is having a drive at a garage at the Pearl on 250 East Grayson Street. It will be happening from 9 a.m. until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Those interested in donating blood must make an appointment by visiting SouthTexasBlood.org or calling the phone number on your screen. Blood drives are planned up until April 5th. We have the locations listed on KSAT.com. Blood donation is designated as an essential public health activity and is allowed during the stay home, work safe order. Now, their goal is to prevent any possible shortage during the coronavirus pandemic. Right now at KSAT.com, we're continuing to keep track of the latest developments surrounding the virus across the state and here at home, including updates from local, state, and federal officials. We have an entire page dedicated to the effort. Look for the coronavirus page on KSAT.com. It was one of the most shocking murders here in decades. A veteran San Antonio Police Department detective shot to death, execution style, right in front of police headquarters. Paul Venemer reports that now, because of the pandemic, the accused killer's capital murder trial has been postponed indefinitely. As he sat in his patrol car completing paperwork, a man approached Detective Ben Marconi and fired two shots into his head. 35-year-old Otis McCain was arrested within hours and charged with capital murder. Just as jury selection in his trial was to begin, the coronavirus pandemic hit full stride. There's a lot of the jurors in the initial part of that of that jury selection that have self-quarantined. Judge Ron Runhell, who is not only the presiding judge in McCain's trial, he's also the criminal district court's administrative judge. He said that would have created a huge headache if he allowed jury selection to go forward. You have to go and order their individual questioning. And so if there's a juror, for instance, if juror number one is self-quarantined, then we have to wait for that to be resolved before we can bring in jurors two and so forth. Ron Hill ordered that the jury selection process stop completely, citing perhaps the biggest concern, each prospective juror would have to be interviewed in this small conference room. Each side has three attorneys. Um, you have the defendant and the bailiffs that are present, as well as the judge and the court reporter. That exceeds the number of people allowed in one room. Though the trial is on indefinite hold, the original panel of 400 prospective jurors selected here earlier this month remains on standby for when the courthouse returns to business as usual. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. Now seven minutes past the hour, 59 degrees. Still ahead, how a popular restaurant reservation company wants to help alleviate overcrowding at supermarkets. And next, Ford is the latest big company to help in the, during the outbreak. We'll tell you about the thousands of ventilators they plan on manufacturing. And live cam giving us a peek outside. So happy to have you with us on this Tuesday morning. We'll get an update on traffic and forecast. Welcome back. It is now 11 minutes after 5. And your morning consumer headlines, another automaker is using one of its factories to make ventilators. Ford is hoping to manufacture 50,000 ventilators in 100 days at a Michigan plant. The automaker will produce a type of ventilator that only uses air pressure and requires no electricity. Aeron, a Florida company, currently manufactures a ventilator and licenses it to GE Healthcare, but it only makes three units per day. The announcement comes after President Donald Trump invoked the Defense Production Act last week to compel General Motors to make ventilators. Tesla, Dyson, and Virgin Orbit are also working to manufacture the life-saving devices. Macy says it will furlough a majority of its employees because of the outbreak. The company says furloughs will begin this week, affecting more than half of its 125,000 workers. But Macy says it plans to gradually rehire them when business returns to normal. The furloughed workers will be covered by the company's health care at least through May. The company says the outbreak wiped out much of its sales and forced it to close all 775 stores in the U.S. Macy's Online is still up and running, but they make up only a fifth of the company's total revenue. And it's Taco Tuesday at Taco Bell. Locations around the country are giving away free tacos today well, while supplies last. Starbucks is giving free coffee to health care workers and first responders through May the 3rd. And that is a great idea. They deserve it. They do deserve it. 512, 59 degrees. Still ahead as the need for medical supplies grow. 
grows, many musical artists are lending their talents to help raise money to manufacture more. In excess, more people are using video conferencing software these days. Zoom under scrutiny for its data privacy and security practices. Chick-fil-A, we know a little thing like staying in can make a big difference. That's why it's our pleasure to come to you with delivery right to your door. Order through the Chick-fil-A app where possible or our delivery partners, DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Grubhub. We can't wait to serve you. Now more than ever, the little things make a big difference. Like contactless payment through the Chick-fil-A app. Place a mobile order and pay ahead of your visit. Then pick up in the drive through or curbside where available. In the meantime, let's all take good care of each other. Yes, it's the first word of any new discovery. But when allergies attack, the excitement fades. Allegra helps you say yes with the fastest non-drowsy allergy relief and turn any half-hearted yes into an all-in yes. Allegra, live your life, not your allergies. If your gums bleed when you brush, you may have gingivitis, and the clock could be ticking towards bad breath, receding gums, and possibly tooth loss. Help turn back the clock on gingivitis with Paradontax. Leave bleeding gums behind. Paradontax. And welcome back. The live messaging service Zoom is under scrutiny for its data privacy and security practices. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, privacy and security concerns about Zoom. The popular video conferencing app's use is soaring during this pandemic, but New York State is reportedly looking into what Zoom is doing to protect users' privacy. There are multiple reports of hackers hijacking Zoom's virtual meetings is known as Zoom bombing. Restaurant reservation app Open Table has launched a tool to set up reservation times at supermarkets and other retailers. Users get text alerts when it's their time to shop. Only a handful of supermarkets in California are using the new feature, but Open Table is hoping to expand. And with action on the court on hold, NBA fans can soon get their basketball fix. The league is reportedly looking into holding a video game tournament with actual players competing in NBA 2K. The event may launch as soon as Friday on ESPN and play out over 10 days. Those are your Tech Bites. Time check 516. We're at 59 degrees. It is time once again to check on the roads. Any accidents to report? Well, right now, things still look pretty good. So take a look at the map, but no accidents at this point. So that's the great news. We're going to move from the map over to Transguide. That's I-10-604. Earlier this morning, we saw, actually, you couldn't see, <laughs> uh, past uh, right about uh, this light post right there that's not working uh, due to how bad the fog was and it just cleared up in a matter of minutes. 604 Clover, no sign of it whatsoever. Moving over to 3537 here in the downtown area, you can see north and southbound lanes. No issues. We do have uh, some flashing lights there warning you to slow down as you're exiting for northbound 281. 410 Morrison down the south side. We don't get that uh, shot too often, so we'll leave that up. Just remember, folks, once you reach your destination, uh, practice social distancing, stay your uh, safe distance from everyone, and hopefully make it to the end of the day with no issues. All we can do is hope and try. That's what you can do. What you got behind you? <laughs> A beautiful picture there, and this young lady has been doing a lot of photography, so get outside and enjoy, uh, you know, take some pictures and send in those KSAC Connect pictures. Got a few of them from uh, her coming up this morning, but a great shot of the hummingbirds out there. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Kind of just takes your mind off things for a while. So looking at some of those KCAC Connect pictures. All right, no problem with visibility out there at the airport. This is looking off to the east. We should have a pretty decent sunrise this morning. Still have four counties left over in the dense fog advisory. Everything else uh, has been deleted from this advisory, which was is issued late last night. Uh, half mile visibility at Castroville, quarter mile Hondo. Port SA has really improved. Everything in and around town is looking very good. So just uh, heading out 90, you're going to run into some of that fog, including in U Valley, and then we've got some leftover fog in Gonzales, but again, the only counties in the advisory are south and west of town. 59 in town, uh, 61 Rio Medina, Bandera, 52 in comfort. So drier air is continuing to work its way on in here. The dew points have been dropping off somewhat and they will continue to drop off. We did have these dew points well up into the 60s and even uh, upper 60s yesterday, but now with the front coming on in, drier air moves in. It's very pleasant, almost kind of 
kind of coolish. You step outside this morning and we've got winds that have shifted around out of the northwest. They're going to be picking up a little bit. It's not going to be overly breezy today, but just a nice, uh, say, 10, 15 mile per hour breeze throughout the rest of the afternoon. And computer model has just lots of sunshine today. Maybe one or two clouds out there. Lots of clear skies tonight, and that's really going to allow temperatures to drop down. So we're looking at the low 50s and even upper 40s in the hill country by tomorrow morning. We'll have a few more clouds hanging around here tomorrow, and then especially tomorrow night, clouds will move on in here. And there and may actually be a couple of showers late, late tomorrow night, and then the rain chances really start to uh, start up on Thursday. So here's what the uh, Dew point temperatures look like throughout the day and therefore the humidity wind is out of the north to uh, northwest and we've got these numbers that are just really nice because when you're below 60, it feels good. And so we're going to be right around, say, mid 40s and even 30s in the hill country. And that will remain through tomorrow. But then notice how the wind starts to shift around during the day tomorrow. That will eventually pull the humidity back on in here. And we're going to be keeping those dew points up into the 60s. And so therefore, that's going to help with the rain chances. And that's hopefully going to be feeding some of that rain. So we do have a couple of, uh, now just a few clouds hanging around here. That's pretty much about it as of right now. Lots of sunshine today. Get outside and enjoy it, except for the oak pollen, which, oh, that can't come to an end soon enough. 70 at noon today, mostly sunny skies. And then high temperature up to 80, which is going to be really nice with the low humidity. Tomorrow, another nice day, 79. A few more clouds, especially late in the day, and then tomorrow night into Thursday. And then Thursday, a few showers around here. It looks like right now the best chance of rain is going to be on Friday. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Uh, temperatures will drop slightly on Saturday, maybe slightly lesser chance for some rain. It's not going to be a washout this weekend, but we will have more showers around here. And then even into Sunday, as well as Monday, we'll still have a chance for a couple of uh, leftover showers. Mark, Leslie, Michael, thank you, sir. Time check right now. We know now. everybody's name. We do. See how we did that? <laughs> Amazing how that happens. We didn't even need name tags this time. 521, 59 degrees. Next on GMSA, in the midst of the coronavirus, how recording artists are using the music to inspire and help raise money for essential supplies. Guess what, Leslie? I bet it's time to do lottery numbers. Here we go. Yeah, we're going to have these memorized in about 15 minutes. Pick three numbers, 008, Fireball 5, Daily 4, 84, 44, Fireball 3. And your cash five numbers, 12, 13, 22, 25, 34. Texas two-step 5, 19, 20, 35 with a bonus ball of 12. Welcome back. It is now 524. Today in entertainment news, music is being used to inspire, to raise money, and to just feel good. You're seeing it's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. John Bon Jovi's latest collaboration is with the Invictus Games Choir, wounded and sick veterans from the UK Armed Forces who use music to aid in their recovery. Harry, the Duke of Sussex, who created the Invictus Games, was on hand for the video shoot at Abbey Road Studios. All proceeds from the track go to support rehab and recovery for international wounded military personnel. Shinedown is only releasing this snippet of its new song, Atlas Falls. The band is hoping fans will buy it along with this t-shirt. All the money goes to the humanitarian aid group Direct Relief, which is working to provide personal protective equipment to healthcare workers dealing with the coronavirus. Shinedown says it contributed the first $20,000 to the effort and in a week has raised another hundred grand.
What's old is new again. The mm -hmm. percussion track in the weekend's new album is ripped right out of the 1980s. Isn't that something? It's crazy. And music really does make you feel better. It, I, I do that when I get home every day. I turn music on to cook dinner, and it just... <sighs> Soothe the soul now more than ever. That is so true. 527, 59 degrees. Still ahead, the latest nationwide numbers on the coronavirus as the nation records the highest single day total since the outbreak began. Plus more on a new effort to help protect uh, the health of medical workers on the front lines, helping those who have COVID-19. And do you understand everything you need to know about checks coming out of the nation's largest stimulus package? We're going to break it down for you. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday. We're wrapping up the month of March. It's the 31st. Thanks for being with us this morning. We got rain to talk about. We do. Rain chances spread out over a number of days, but I guess the main headline this morning is fog goes away. Front comes in. Here's Mike. All right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we had a dense fog advisory that was issued late last night, and ever since then, more and more counties have been getting deleted from that dense fog advisory as the dry air moves in associated with this front and clearing things out and got a beautiful view out there at the airport as of right now. Sunrise should be pretty nice. So most everybody has good visibility, but then you head over 90 Castroville Hondo. You still have down to a quarter mile visibility. Uh, same thing in Uvalde, and then there's a little bit off to the E. Well, Gonzalez was at one mile just last half hour, and now it has definitely improved. Still some along the coastal plain, but this is the only spot really just off to the west and southwest of town where there's still some fog and dense fog advisory remains in effect for just the four counties, Atascosa, Frio, Medina and Uvalde up until six o'clock this morning and should be expiring or be allowed to expire by then. 59 in town, 55 Bull Verde and even 50 in Kerrville. So temperatures have continued to drop down as the drier air moves on here in here with these clear skies because dry air does not hold the heat in very well. Oak, by the way, is just beyond ridiculous, uh, close to 31,000. Of course, the updated reading is going to be coming out yeah, it's just after 7 o'clock this morning. Low amounts of everything else out there. And throughout the rest of today, fantastic. It's going to be a great day. Get out and take a nice little stroll. I know we've got oak pollen to deal with, but we're going to have low humidity, nice breeze out of the north to northwest, 70 at noon, 80 for a high temperature today. Tomorrow, Pretty much a repeat of today. Then, yeah, we do have some rain chances moving on in here. We'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Marcus Trujillo, anything going on? Right now, still looking pretty good out there, Mike. We have no accidents on the highway, so that's the great news. Let's take a closer look through Transguide as we transition from the map. I-10 impressive, just slight hints, a little bit of uh, uh, haze in the air there, but not too bad. 14 and Morrison, much clearer. And then I-10 and Crossroads, eastbound and westbound lanes. So far, no issues there. And as we move over to I-10 and Callahan, you can see that the connector ramps there off of I-10, 410. So far, everything looking pretty good. Just make sure you watch your speed once you head out this morning. Leslie? Thank you, Marcus. Well, the San Antonio Food Bank has made some changes to accommodate what it says has been a doubling in the amount of people in need. It's set to open its first mega food distribution site later on this morning. Katrina Weber's live at the Alamo Dome where that is actually happening. And Katrina, it looks like some people are getting an early start. Well, that's right, an early start for sure. We have, what, five people here lined up already. And from what we've been told, some of them got here as early as midnight. The San Antonio Food Bank says since the coronavirus pandemic and all of the shutdowns hit, it is seeing twice as many people turn to the agency for help to handle the big crowds and get emergency food to all of those in immediate need. It's holding these mega distribution events. The first starts today at 10. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is that they are requiring people to pre-register for this. You have to do that before you can get any food here. As of late yesterday, they still had some slots open for today and Friday. All you have to do is go to the food bank's website, which is listed right there on the screen, or call their phone number, which is 210-431-8326. Now, the food bank also is in need of some volunteers to help them with these crowds, and they say that you can sign up to be a volunteer right, th right there through that same website. Reporting live at the Alamo Dome, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. People infected with COVID-19 who make a full recovery may have the chance to help patients still suffering from the virus. Houston Methodist is one of the first academic hospitals in the country to be approved to try an experimental coronavirus blood transfusion therapy. The FDA approved the hospital to give critically ill coronavirus patients plasma from people who've recovered. 
The plan is to track how those patients respond to it and also to add more patients to get a wider look. Results vary, but China published this week that they found the treatment to be beneficial in a handful of patients. Monday, another grim day for us here in the United States of America. There were at least 574 coronavirus-related deaths reported. That's the highest single-day total for the country since the outbreak began. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, it could be a while before that trend ends. President Trump reiterating his call for the U.S. to maintain social distancing guidelines for another month to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. The more we commit ourselves now, the sooner we can win the fight and return to our lives, and they will be great lives. But the fight is far from over. There are more than 3,000 U.S. deaths from the virus, and because of the threat of infection, some, like Michelle Bennett, aren't able to say goodbye to loved ones in person. We get the phone call for FaceTime, and, you know, she put it right up to my mother's face, and, um, you know, I could, I could tell my mom I loved her and how much I was going to miss her. Among the other COVID-19 victims, at least five veterans at the Holyoke Soldiers Home in Massachusetts. The superintendent of that facility is now on paid administrative leave. And as the number of deaths rises, health officials say the virus could surge later this year. I would anticipate that that would actually happen because of the degree of transmissibility. However, if you come back in the fall, it will be a totally different ball game. Our ability to go out and be able to test, identify, isolate, and contact trace will be orders of magnitude better than what it was just a couple of months ago. I'm John Lawrence reporting. 535, 59 degrees. Coming up next, an update on what healthcare workers are doing on the front lines to try to stop the spread of COVID-19. Outside with live cam, more changes in the forecast. Never gets dull around here in the spring, that's for sure. Mike has a look ahead. What's going to happen for the rest of this week? Coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio. New York's governor asking medical professionals from other states to come to New York to help treat patients. Healthcare workers are making sacrifices across the country, separated from their families as they wage this brutal war. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details. This morning, hospital workers on the front lines, fearful, exhausted, but vowing to fight what one doctor calls the invisible risk that trails her. I worry about bringing the virus home from work to my family. Dr. Michelle Al is an anesthesiologist in Atlanta. With elective surgeries on hold, she's been given one of the most dangerous jobs at her hospital, intubating coronavirus patients who can't breathe on their own. Dr. Al admits she recently updated her will and she's already living separately from her family. I sleep separately from everyone else now in a room in the basement. Sarah Moore, a nurse in St. Paul, Minnesota, and a self-proclaimed germaphobe, says she did everything right and still tested positive for the virus. I couldn't get out of bed. I mean, I felt like I was hit by a truck. Doctors and nurses have become a critical link for families unable to visit the hospital. They describe the emotional toll of being the last ones with dying patients. Their families can only say goodbye over a video app online. I just came from a patient's room. Um, he's actively dying, positive diagnosis of COVID-19. And um, his family can't come, so I had to FaceTime his family. And it was just so heartbreaking. And this morning, a growing death toll among healthcare workers, including neurosurgeon James Goodrich of New York. He made medical history in 2017 when he successfully separated conjoined twin boys during a 27 hour surgery. If you don't have a healthcare crisis in your community, please come help us in New York. Now, in New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo is urging healthcare workers in other states to help New York face the overwhelming crush of patients. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. 541, 59 degrees. Do you know what you need to know when it comes to getting that upcoming stimulus check? We're going to break it all down for you coming up next. 543, the $2 trillion economic stimulus package. It is the largest in our nation's entire history. How soon can you expect a check? And what do you do to get it? RJ Marquez breaks down what it all means for you. 
The stimulus package is designed to put money directly into Americans' pockets, but it will also help hospitals, businesses, and local governments that have been crippled by the pandemic. It is a massive bill. Here's a look at some of the key points. The package includes a one-time direct payment to Americans. One of the biggest questions being asked right now, who qualifies for these payments? Most Americans will get a stimulus check as long as they have a work-eligible social security number and meet the income requirements. The IRS will base the payments on a person's adjusted gross income on his or her 2018 tax return or their 2019 return if they have already filed. All Americans with an adjusted gross income below $75,000 or $150,000 for a married couple would receive the full amount of $1,200 per adult or $2,400 per a married couple, plus $500 per dependent child. Americans who make between $75,000 and $99,000 or married couples making between $150,000 and $198,000 are eligible for a portion of the payment. The rebate amount for people in this category will be reduced by $5 for every $100 in income over $75,000 or $150,000 for a married couple. Okay, so let's do some of the math. For every $1,000 over $75, you're gonna lose $50. Meaning if you make $76,000 a year, your rebate check will be $1,150. The amount per child is not adjusted by income, but is only available to parents with income of $99,000 or less and married married couples with income of $198,000 or less. If you make more than $99,000, you're not getting anything. Here are some other things to keep in mind. People with no income are also eligible for the same amounts. People who have been listed as a dependent on someone else's tax return, such as a teenager or young adult, are not eligible to receive a payment. So when can you expect your payment? Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin says that Americans can expect their checks in about three weeks, but some experts say that could take longer. People who have already set up direct deposit with the IRS could get their checks sooner. Others might have to wait weeks or even months to see their money because it will take the IRS longer to get the paper checks printed. For The Nine, RJ Marcus. Prices for wheat and rice have been on the rise with people forced to stay home and stock up. Wheat futures up 15% in the last few weeks. Rice futures are up 17% since the start of the year. During these trying times, we might need a soothing voice to help us get to sleep. Well, Dolly Parton is reading bedtime stories to us in a new YouTube series. The Read Aloud program is set to run 10 weeks, and it will feature stories including the little engine that could, llama llama red pajama, that's fun to say, and Parton's own coat of many colors. The Jolene Singer has always had a passion for reading. In 1995, she created the gift-giving program Imagination Library. It mails out free books to children around the world. I'll sign up for some of that. I know, right? Aww. 547, 59 degrees. Let's get an update on the commute. James Earl Jones' voice would be good, too. Right? That would be excellent. Marcus? Depends on, depends on the story, though. He might scare you. Because it because everything sounds like your favorite. Yeah, it's just a powerful voice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, depending on what he's reading yeah. to you. If you're just listening to Field of Dreams instead of watching, that also mm -hmm. sounds like Darth Vader. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, right now, uh, nothing scary about the roadways. Even the fog has uh, kind of vacated the area. Let's take a look at some trans guide cameras right now, folks. No accidents on the highways. 37 to Jones looking great. No traffic backed up on the north or the southbound lanes and 21 and 410 up there by the airport. So far, no issues, and hopefully it'll stay that way for the rest of the commute. Mm -hmm. The Llama Llama book and the uh, Llama Llama, llama, red, llama, llama red, red, red Pajama. pajama. Yeah, that is a lot of fun to say. And little and there's the Llama Llama Mad at Mama. Oh, I don't know yeah. that one. Wait, there's a series? There's a whole Yeah, there's there's a bunch of them. And Little Engine That Could, though, my one son, I read that a, a zillion times. Yes, I I, we've all read that one, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Well, we are kicking off a month tomorrow. Of course, April showers mean... May flowers. May flowers. Speaking of flowers, oh, cool picture. Okay. Very, very artistic picture. This is hmm. an extreme close-up of a lily. And look at the delicate little, even the edges of those petals on there and the purple. That's a really cool picture. That'd make a great framed shot. Thank you very much for that picture. Uh, we do have a couple of stars that are showing up here there on the uh, live cam over there by the airport. And obviously visibility is looking good there. We still have and this should uh, these counties should just be in effect uh, the dense fog advisory just in effect for these counties up until uh, six o'clock. So for the next about 10 minutes or so, of course, there were a lot more included in this when it was initially issued late last night and then counties have been 
deleted all morning long because the drier air has been moving on in here. So Casterville, which was at a quarter mile, is now starting to improve. Hondo quarter mile and Uvalde has also improved somewhat. So uh, I think it's going to be right on schedule for that uh, uh, advisory to be allowed to uh, expire at 6 o'clock this morning. 50 Bernie Comfort, uh, Canyon Lake 62, 59 in town, and we have much drier that's moved on in here yesterday. These dew point temperatures, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere did get up into the uh, about mid 60s or even some upper 60s in places. But now the drier air continues to move on in here and it will continue to push on in throughout the rest of today. So it's going to be really comfortable today. Uh, mostly clear skies and dry air overnight tonight. So that's going to allow temperatures to drop down into the uh, mid to even lower 50s and upper 40s in the hill country. So it will actually be a little bit below normal to start off tomorrow and then a nice warm up throughout the day because the dry air warms up very easily. As far as any clouds, we're not really going to have anything around today. Maybe a couple of them out there. That's going to be the extent of it. And then tomorrow we'll start off with plenty of sunshine. But throughout the day, we are going to see more clouds start to move on in here. And late tomorrow night, there could be a couple of sprinkly showers, but then a little bit better chance of rain is going to be moving in here on Thursday. Also, the dry air, which we will have today and tomorrow, is then going to be replaced with more humidity as these dew points come up by Thursday into the weekend, and that's going to help to feed some of the showers around here. So it's looking optimistic as far as rain because we could use some. We're about an well, inch and a half behind at least uh, going back in toward the first part of the month. 70 today at noon, mostly sunny skies, and then a high temperature today up to 80, low humidity. Just a really nice day. Wind out of the northwest at about 10, 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow, another fantastic day. We start off on the coolish side down to 53 degrees, then get up to 79, and we will see a few more clouds later on in the, uh, in the afternoon, and then overnight into Thursday. A lot of clouds clouds and we are going to then see a chance for some rain coming on in here Thursday. Best chance is going to be on Friday and we'll still have a couple of showers around in through the weekend, maybe a little bit more of a lull on Saturday. So at least we've got, I mean, we've got about a five day window for some rain. So hopefully we get some decent, decent rain out of it. But today and tomorrow, fantastic. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. All right, maybe this is a chance to play catch up as far as every rivers and lakes, which uh, continue to suffer due to a kind of an extended drought situation. Yeah, we were going pretty good starting off the first mm -hmm. of the year, and then, you know, it started to wane. This is a personal account from our fishermen. I know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I'm no expert. Thank you very much, Mike. Right now, 551, 59 degrees. Coming up next on GMSA, more on a pup who is using some very special canine talents to assist in a unique wine delivery service for people stuck at home. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick 3008, Fireball 5, Daily 4, 84, 44, Fireball 3. He said 44. And catch 5 numbers 1213, 22, 25, 34. Texas 2 step 519, 20, 35 with a bonus spell of 12. You say that like it's an extra large 2 2. It is. It's doubled. Coming up here on GMA, we are diving into the pandemic. And this morning, the governor of New York is putting out an SOS to the rest of the states, just asking for any help from healthcare workers as the overwhelmed hospitals see more and more patients. Top experts are predicting more hotspots in major cities across the nation. The commanding general from the Army Corps of Engineers will join us as they help build temporary hospitals with thousands of new beds. You'll see this coming up right here on GMA. Mike, we got more time behind us than in front. Man, please. I'm going to be running down criminals till I'm 100. Will Smith and Martin Lawrence return in the long-awaited threequel Bad Boys for Life. The action thriller hits digital on Tuesday and arrives on Blu-ray and DVD three weeks from now. On my planet, people were always after my powers. So I came to yours. For kids self-isolating at home, Sonic the Hedgehog speeds onto digital on Tuesday. You'll have to wait until mid-May to nab the speedy blue guy on Blu-ray or DVD. Two weeks after it hit digital, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker arrives on disc with an array of special features including The Skywalker Legacy, a feature-length documentary on the making of the film. 
There's a contest between you. This is a battle for the brightest minds of America. The Current War Director's Cut is also available on Blu-ray and DVD this week. The drama about the battle between Edison, Westinghouse, and Tesla to dominate the new electricity market failed to spark much interest in theaters. We'll see if it's able to light up home video. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, a lot of places are offering curbside delivery, like restaurants and grocery stores, but Stonehouse Urban Winery in Hagerstown, Maryland, is putting a new spin on it. A 75-pound Brindle boxer named Soda Pup is helping fulfill orders. Wearing an apron, the dog delivers bottles of wine to customers curbside. Owners say the pup is delivering more than just wine. He's bringing people together who have to stay apart. Look at that face. You're watching GMSA on the last day of March. So glad you're with us. Bias is something that is learned, according to new research. In the next hour, Good Morning San Antonio, we'll see how you act as a parent to prevent your child from learning your personal bias. Trans Guide right now, showing us 410 at Morrison and I-10 out there at Crossroads. Officer Marcus Trujillo has an update on time saver traffic and kind of a showery spring forecast from meteorologist Mike Osterhage. Stick around one hour of news, weather and traffic next. Huh? 168 confirmed cases of the coronavirus here in Bear County and a new death. I'm Max Massey. I'm going to have a full breakdown and what's new today. Health experts are warning that the current crisis unfolding in New York City could be a preview of what other states will soon face. I'm Inez de la in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. Another front in the forecast has helped push out some fog in the overnight hours, and rain is still in the extended forecast. Mike Osterhage has details. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Well, there's good news. Good morning to you. We can put the month of March behind us after today. Yeah, we start a whole new one tomorrow and Easter's around the corner. We got a lot of stuff coming up this month. And we'll get into all that in just a minute. But Mike, we've got a good looking day ahead. We've got a fantastic day. That uh, latest front, Pacific front, but it's pulling in drier air. We had some fog overnight. There's still a couple of patches out there, but uh, as the drier air moves on in here, most of the fog is getting out of the picture. Nothing is obviously showing up in this picture. Now we still have have some over toward Hondo, uh, but Castroville is now up to four miles. So, you know, just what uh, 45 minutes ago, it was down to about a quarter mile. So things are definitely improving. Uh, it has dropped down, though, a little bit of uh, Fog has popped up there in New Braunfels, mile and a quarter, and then half mile Hondo. Uvalde still has a little bit of fog. No fog advisories are in effect. They were allowed to expire at the top of the hour as scheduled. 58 now in town, 54 Bulverde, and low 50s in parts of the hill country. Really pleasant out there with this drier air. Now, Oak remains just sky high. Basically, I think the best way to put it is on the ridiculous side. Yesterday's reading was close to 31,000. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour or so. Yeah, today is going to be absolutely fantastic. We are going to go from the upper 50s right around 60 degrees and get up uh, about 70 degrees by noon. Plenty of sunshine. Wind is going to be primarily out of the north to um, about to 10, 15 miles per hour. And then we'll top off later on today right up to 80. Again, with dry air, drier air, low humidity, nice breeze out there. Oh, perfect day to go out and take a nice little walk around the, the neighborhood. And tomorrow's going to be pretty much the same. Then we've got those rain chances moving on in. More on that coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo, and you haven't had much to talk about this morning. It's been pleasantly quiet this morning for folks on the roadway. And that's welcome relief because uh, yesterday and last week we kept seeing a number of accidents despite the significantly lighter traffic out there. So hopefully uh, what's happened this morning so far will continue throughout the rest of not not just the rest of the commute, but throughout the rest of the day. So right now, let's take a look outside through TransGuide. I-10 impressed just a little bit of fog there, not too much. Now, we saw a lot more I-10-604. It's already cleared out of there. 410 at Morrison's been clear all morning long. Hopefully, it stays that way. Then I-10 at Crossroads. So far, no problems there. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. Here in Bear County, of the testing completed, we have 168 confirmed cases of the coronavirus. And as of this morning, we have six deaths related to COVID-19. Max Massey joins us live downtown. Max, this is the sixth death, but you say it's also the first here. That's right. 
Uh, it is a first here. The other five deaths have all been women. This is actually the first man to die here in Bear County related to COVID-19. And this morning, we're starting to learn a little bit more about him. Officials telling us that it was a man in his 50s with underlying health conditions. We know that he died at Methodist Northeast Hospital. The virus was actually detected when he was taken to the hospital for unrelated reasons. Now, we talked about those 168 confirmed cases here in the county. So here's a breakdown. Of those 168, 63 are travel-related cases, 57 community transmission cases, 22 of them are still under investigation, and we do know that there are 42 hospitalizations, 13 of them are in intensive care, 11 are on ventilators as we speak. Important to note, of those 168 cases, Mayor Ron Nuremberg announcing that 44 of them have made full recoveries. And here in Texas, we know that there are more than 2,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19. And we expect to hear from Governor Abbott at 2 o'clock this afternoon. And if you're interested in watching, we're going to be streaming it on KSAT and, of course, KSAT.com. Mark Leslie. Nationally, President Trump says challenging times are ahead for at least the next 30 days. Doctors and scientists are on, on his team are warning that we still haven't seen the worst of the outbreak. ABC's Ines de la Quatera has more. Some of, some of the horror Overnight, a New York Governor Andrew Cuomo with a grim warning. This is unlike anything you've seen before. You'll see it increasing uh, and you'll see it everywhere. New York is just first. Cuomo calling on healthcare workers around the country to come help out if they can as New York City becomes the epicenter of the U.S. outbreak. We've lost over 1,000 New Yorkers. To me, we're beyond staggering already. We've reached staggering. Hospitals overwhelmed, the U.S. Navy hospital ship Comfort pulling into port, and a field hospital now up in Central Park. Meanwhile, on the other side of the country, Los Angeles also expecting a spike. In Louisiana, the governor there says the state is just days away from running out of ventilators and bed capacity. And in Michigan, Detroit is converting this convention center into a 900-bed hospital. At least 37 states now telling people to stay home. Dr. Deborah Burks of the Coronavirus Task Force telling NBC, If the metros and the rural areas don't take care now, by the time you see it, it has penetrated your community pretty significantly. President Trump boasting one million tests have now been completed, even though in terms of per capita testing, the U.S. is still far behind South Korea and Italy, and now showing off a new five-minute testing kit. The numbers have been incredible on testing, and we have something from Abbott Labs, which is right here, and that's a five-minute test, highly accurate. And the president also announced Ford would begin building ventilators, teaming up with General Electric to produce 50,000 of them in 100 days. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. Almost all school board, municipal and runoff elections will be postponed due to the coronavirus pandemic. Election day was supposed to be May 2nd in Bear County. It needs to be delayed. That means we may not be able to vote on important local issues until July at the earliest. And at this time, City Council is debating whether to include other proposals on the general election ballot November. That includes local ballot proposals and citywide ones, such as pre-K for SA. By the time we get to November, that ballot should be extremely long because we're taking all of these entities from May and putting it onto that November ballot. Catalan also says campaigning will likely move to social media and phone calls because people might be less likely to knock on doors and canvas. It was one of the most shocking murders here in the Alamo City in decades. A veter veteran San Antonio Police Department detective shot to death execution style right in front of police headquarters. Paul Venema reports that now because of the pandemic, the accused killer's capital murder trial has been postponed indefinitely. As he sat in his patrol car completing paperwork, a man approached Detective Ben Marconi and fired two shots into his head. 35-year-old Otis McCain was arrested within hours and charged with capital murder. Just as jury selection in his trial was to begin, the coronavirus pandemic hit full stride. There's a lot of the jurors in the initial part of that, of that 
jury selection that have self-quarantined. Judge Ron Runhell, who is not only the presiding judge in McCain's trial, he's also the criminal district court's administrative judge. He said that would have created a huge headache if he allowed jury selection to go forward. You have to go and order their individual questioning. And so if there's a juror, for instance, if juror number one is self-quarantined, then we have to wait for that to be resolved before we can bring in jurors two uh, and so forth. Ron Hill ordered that the jury selection process stop completely, citing perhaps the biggest concern, each prospective juror would have to be interviewed in this small conference room. Each side has three attorneys. Um, you have the defendant, and the bailiffs that are present, as well as the judge and the court reporter. That exceeds the number of people allowed in one room. Though the trial is on indefinite hold, the original panel of 400 prospective jurors selected here earlier this month remains on standby for when the courthouse returns to business as usual. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. More than $19 million in federal funding will come to San Antonio, El Paso, and Bear County to fight coronavirus. It follows the CARES Act passed last week by Congress, which released $12.5 billion to local communities through the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. The city of San Antonio will receive nearly $12 million in community development and emergency shelter grants. Meanwhile, Bear County will receive just over $2 million. As the mayor contemplates closing public parks amid the pandemic, there are some do's and don'ts that he wants to remind everyone about. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says you can walk, hike, bike, run, and exercise in local parks or on area trails, but you must follow city mandates from the stay home, stay safe, work safe order. That means no meeting with trainers or workout buddies. You cannot use the playground or fitness equipment, and you cannot gather to play sports or use public courts. He also says barbecues and picnics are not allowed. Law enforcement will increase its presence this week. For all the latest developments on the coronavirus pandemic in San Antonio, go to KSAT.com. We will continue to update information throughout the day from local, state, and national sources. New this morning, police are searching for a shooter after a robbery at a northeast side restaurant. San Antonio police say a Pizza Hut employee was leaving through the back door of a restaurant in the 14,600 block of Nacogdoches around 11.45 this morning. They say, or 1.45 this morning probably, they say a man walked up to her and shot her in the stomach. The shooter ran away before police arrived. The woman was taken to a hospital where she is expected to recover. 610, 58 degrees. As we stay socially distanced, keeping in contact with one another may mean video chats. However, some people are questioning Zoom's security and privacy standards. Local artists struggling because of the pandemic, forcing local venues and calories to close. But find out how a local art organization is trying to keep those community members afloat. And taking a look outside with live cam, we have a couple of days of beautiful weather in store and rain chances as well. Mike has all the details coming up. A local music director with the Woodlawn Theater is working on a relief program for artists. As we have focused on the brave men and women fighting on the front lines of the coronavirus and on the government's response, it can be easy to forget about others in our community who are being affected. That's why Luminaria and the City of San Antonio are doing what they can to help artists who may be struggling during the pandemic. The director of Luminaria, Kathy Armstrong, says the program will help artists who do not have the ability to book shows or galleries with non-essential businesses closing down. They are your dancers, they are your poets, they are your visual artists, your sculptors, your performers, and they are the people who really bring a lot of life and creativity and culture to the city. And so to read these stories of great need, it, it is heartbreaking. Armstrong says more than 100 people have already signed up for the Corona Arts Relief Program. To learn more about it, just go to KSAT.com. Quarter past the hour. Time to check on the roadways. Marcus, what's happening out there? Well, we've been very fortunate this morning. Still no accidents, so we're going to go from the map over to Transguide. Right now, we're taking a look at 35, 410 North and Southbound lanes. Still running smoothly, no issues there. 37 and Jones, you can see those Southbound lanes, no line exiting for Southbound 35, so that's a great news. And up there by the airport, traffic looks pretty good for the little traffic that we do have. Mike Osterhage joins us now. What do you have there on KSAT Connect? This sums it up. All right, Perfectly. let's see it. I'm ready. Yeah. So Aww. bored. Ten That's different adorable. ways to sleep on the <gasps> couch. And it almost sounds like 
that dog would have that voice. So, so bored. Yeah. Now Aww. put James Earl Jones' voice with me. <laughs> That's reading right. you a bedtime story. Yeah, and and I know a lot of folks are bored, a lot of kids are bored, and everything. But uh, you know, one of the best things to do just get outside, take a nice little walk, and it's going to be a fantastic day for it. By the way, thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connects picture. All right, uh, we've been talking about rain chances coming up this weekend, and as far as rain, yeah, bring it on because we finish up the month of March. We picked up one one hundredth of an inch officially yesterday. We're not going to see any rain today, and so we uh, finish up with an uh, inch and a half, which is three quarters of an inch below just for the month of March. March, and that's roughly half of our deficit in the, the year so far. We picked up four and a half inches of rain and we're about an inch and a third behind. So it'd be nice to get a whole bunch coming up this weekend, late this weekend, going into this weekend. And rain chances are looking pretty good. All right, we've got clear skies out there right now and uh, can't see any in this shot, but we were seeing a couple of stars. Still have a little bit of fog up around New Braunfels, a mile and a half visibility. For Castroville, that has come up considerably. Hondo is improving, as is Uvalde, improving slightly, but still some fairly thick fog out there. All of the uh, Dense fog advisories were allowed to expire at 6 o'clock, so we don't have any more advisories in place. Temperatures have definitely cooled down as this front moved in here. Now, it's not a big blast of cold air by any means, but some drier moved in. That's allowed temperatures to drop with some clear skies. So we're at 58 here in town. Belverde, 53, and Bandera right now still at 65 degrees, but then Tarpley's at 52. And here comes the drier air moving on in with the dew points that have been dropping down. We started off this morning up around the low 60s, and so uh, the humidity is continuing to drop down as the moisture gets pushed on out of here. And here comes that drier air on these primarily northerly winds throughout the day. So it's going to be really comfortable. Like I said, great day to go take a walk today with temperatures then warming up nicely up to around 80 later on this afternoon. And with the dry air and clear skies in place tonight and fairly light wind, we're going to be dropping down in the low 50, so it's going to be definitely on the cool side tomorrow morning, a little bit below normal, then a nice big warm up throughout the day, and we'll have plenty of sunshine, of course, today. Overnight tonight, the, like I said, the clear skies and then throughout the day tomorrow, we are going to see more clouds start to work their way on in here, and then we're going to be clouding up tomorrow night into Thursday and pretty much once we get into Thursday, we're not going to see much of any sunshine, maybe a little bit on Saturday, a little bit more on Saturday, but I think we'll stay fairly cloudy then all the way through the weekend. And we do have those rain chances and also the humidity is going to come back in, which is not necessarily a bad thing as far as rain is concerned because more moisture in the atmosphere, hopefully we get some decent rain squeezed out of this. Looks like the best opportunity is probably going to be uh, for scattered showers and thunderstorms on Friday. Today, however, Boy, just beautiful out there. 70 at noon, mostly sunny skies and high temperature today up to 80. Wind out of the north to northwest at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So a nice little breeze. The only downside is all that darn oak pollen out there. But uh, other than that, great looking day tomorrow. Another good looking day. 79 after starting off pretty chilly down to 53 degrees. Then we go into Thursday and we'll have a chance for some rain. Temperatures will be about to mid 70s and then Friday is going to be the best chance for some rain. Saturday, perhaps a little bit of sunshine thrown on in there. A couple of showers here and there and I think a slightly better chance once again Sunday, Monday for a few showers. But right now, I think the best day is going to be Friday. At least we've got that we got the chance. A decent window for about what five days or so. I need some. Yeah. 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 All okay. days too. Yeah, we do, all do. Thank you, Mike. Uh, 619, 58 degrees. Most states have issued restrictions on businesses and travel during the pandemic, but many people around the country are ignoring those warnings. After the break, we're going to show you how a Florida pastor was arrested after holding church services. That's coming up in your GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. I am totally blind. And non-24 can make me show up too early or too late or make me feel like I'm not really there. Talk to your doctor and call 844-234-2424. Dad, we need to talk about something important. You don't need to go anywhere, Dad. This is your home. 
The best home to be in is your own. Home Instead offers personalized in-home services for your loved ones. Home Instead Senior Care. To us, it's personal. Your migraine strikes, and the struggle is real. Mom. Take something that can wipe you out, or don't, and fight through every second. New Quick Dissolve Nurtec can bring you back when migraines attack. Just one dose can work fast and last, so you can keep going. Don't take if allergic to Nurtec. The most common side effect was nausea. Nurtec. One migraine, one dose. Wonderful. In this morning's GMA First Look, quarantine revolt. A defiant Florida pastor arrested for openly, blatantly violating a ban on large gatherings, continuing to hold Sunday church services. It's not about a, a, a virus. It's about the church being a essential service to the community. Pastor Rodney Howard Brown of the River Church in Tampa is accused of ignoring local stay-at-home orders, encouraging hundreds of parishioners to show up. Even live streaming the church service, you can see Brown preaching to a room full of people, most of them shoulder to shoulder, in total disregard of the CDC's six feet social distancing guidelines. We'll have much more coming up at 7 a.m. Plus, George Stephanopoulos goes one on one with the commanding general of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. With your GMA First Look, I'm Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. Privacy and security concerns growing about Zoom. The popular video conferencing app's use is soaring these days, but New York State reportedly looking into what Zoom is doing to protect user data and privacy. There are multiple reports of hackers hijacking, hijacking rather, Zoom's virtual meetings. It's also known as Zoom bombing. Restaurant reservation app OpenTable has launched a tool to set up reservation times at supermarkets and other retailers. Users get text alerts when it's their turn to shop. Only a handful of supermarkets in California are using the new feature, but Open Table is hoping to expand. Well, with the action on the court on hold, NBA fans could soon get a basketball fix. The league reportedly looking into holding a video game tournament with actual players competing in NBA 2K. The event may launch as soon as Friday on ESPN and play out over roughly 10 days. Hey, that's kind of cool. It's a great idea. Yeah, your time now, 625, and it is 58 degrees outside. San Antonio Food Bank seeing the number of families in need double. Meanwhile, they need to operate out of mega sites to limit exposure to the coronavirus. We'll have more. And three federal judges striking down a restriction on abortions in Texas during the pandemic. See why they say the measure is unconstitutional. And checking the roads with Trans Guide, Officer Marcus Trujillo from the San Antonio Police Department will get us updated on any accidents around the Alamo City coming up here on GMSA. The San Antonio Food Bank is reaching out to those in need in a big way. As the people here already know, it's happening here at the Alamo Dome. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you all about it. A new coronavirus-related death here in Bear County. I'm going to explain why this one is unique. I'm Max Massey. I'm also going to have a preview of what Governor Abbott is expected to say later this afternoon. And you may not have known it, but while many of you were sleeping, we had some fog in the overnight hours, and now we're seeing a bit of a clearing trend. Mike is standing by with more. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is March 31st. Thank you so much for being with us this morning, everybody. As we put the month of March to bed, how are the roads looking? So far, so good. We've had a very, very pleasant uh, commute this morning uh, for everyone concerned. Uh, no accidents on the highways, and in many, most parts, that fog has cleared out of the way, so it won't be an issue. And that's what I was going to say. Just looking at the live cam behind you there, Mike, it looks clear as a bell. But in some places, it's actually come back. Has it really? Hmm. Yeah. You know, we were talking about Port SA had gotten up to about 10 miles visibility. Now it's dropped back down a little bit. And there's still some fog hanging around in Braunfels as well. So we're not done with it completely. So, yeah, Port SA is at uh, two and three quarter miles. Castroville was just at four miles in the past what, 15 minutes. And now it's dropped down a little bit. But then Hondo has come up somewhat. Stinson has a hint of fog. And New Braunfels has now dropped down to just a half mile visibility. There are no fog advisories in effect. Of course, the dense fog advisory was allowed to expire at 6 o'clock. Uh, but we're still seeing some of this kind of, like I said, hanging on in here. Uh, Uvalde still at a half mile visibility. Elsewhere, it's not bad. So we just got to watch those few little leftover spots here and there. 58 Rio Medina, same thing at the airport. 
Airport. 60 Stinson and Canyon Lake is also coming in at 60 degrees. Lost Maples at 60 as well, but then Tarpley drops down to 51. A ton of oak out there still. All that mess on your cars and everything. The updated count is going to be coming out in just about a half an hour, 45 minutes or so. And hopefully we've seen the last of the really high oak, but ugh, keep your fingers crossed for that. And throughout the rest of today, we are going to be seeing really nothing but sunshine out there. And temperatures are going to be getting up right around uh, 80 for a high. We'll be at 70 at noon. Just a pleasant day. Just a really, really nice day. So if you can, get out and get a breath of fresh air and enjoy it. Go for a little walk around the neighborhood. More on the forecast, which does include some rain that's coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. So you said, well, not much, right? No, no, it's looking, it's looking great out there right now. So for those folks that do have to venture out and uh, make your way to your destination this morning, it should be problem free. So just remember, put away those distractions, both hands on the wheel and focus uh, on the traffic around you. So we'd look at different uh, trans guy cameras. You can see no congestion out there. Fortune Austin Highway looking great here in the downtown area. I-10 at 35, the interchange, no problems. And I-10 Impressa, eastbound and westbound lane so far, still running smoothly. Leslie? Thank you very much. Well, the San Antonio Food Bank plans to help families in a big way. It's holding the first of several mega food distribution events uh, this morning. Katrina Weber is live at the Alamo Dome, where some people have already begun lining up. And we understand there are some steps that people do need to take before they actually show up, Katrina. Well, that's right. The Food Bank wants people to know that before they jump in their cars, they should give their fingers a bit of a workout. They want them to either to pre-register, to either do that through their website or by calling them going to give you that information in just a minute, but I want to show you how long this line has gotten. It goes all the way down the block now, about 15 cars, the last count. Now, as of late yesterday, the food bank was saying it still had some slots open for today and Friday's events. However, I did just speak to the food bank. They say today is all filled up. People can still try to pre-register for Friday. And again, you'll have to do that online or through their uh, by calling them. The food bank hopes to get emergency food to households that are in immediate need. Now, since the coronavirus pandemic began, the agency says it has seen the number of families looking for help double. That's why it set up these mega distribution sites. This one gets underway at 10 o'clock this morning. And again, anyone who wants to take advantage of this needs to pre-register either through the food bank's website, which is on your screen, or by calling that agency at 210-431-8326. And uh, the food bank also is looking for some volunteers to help handle the crowds, which again have begun showing up as early as midnight. And anyone who wants to help out should also head over to the food bank's website for that information. Reporting live at the Alamo Dome, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Here in Bear County, we now officially have six coronavirus related deaths, five women. And as of this morning, one man, Max Massey, joins us live downtown. Max, what are some of the other numbers we should know? Good morning, guys. A lot of big numbers that we know this morning. One of the biggest, more than 2,800. That is the amount of confirmed coronavirus cases here in the state of Texas. Another one, 38, the number of deaths related to COVID-19 here in the Lone Star State. Coming back more local, though, Mark, you said it. Six deaths here in Bear County, 168 confirmed cases. Let's take a look at this breakdown that we know of this morning. Now, Mayor Ron Nuremberg actually announcing 44 patients have had a full recovery so far. We know there are 57 community transmission cases. 22 are still under investigation. There are 42 hospitalizations, 13 of which are in intensive care, 11 on ventilators. As for what's next for the Lone Star State, Governor Greg Abbott is expected to speak at a press conference this afternoon at 2 o'clock. We're going to be streaming that on KSAT and KSAT.com, and we are expected to learn some of the plan going forward. If you are interested in looking at a more of a breakdown of the 168 cases here in Bear County, we have an interactive map right now on KSAT.com. Mark, Leslie. Thank you, Max. Well, as cases continue to soar across the nation, health professionals tout new tools to combat the spread. Experts say more testing, rapid results, and sterilization of masks will help. Meanwhile, President Trump has extended social distancing guidelines for the month of April. CNN's Nadia Romero has more. 
After an hour-long press conference in the Rose Garden at the White House, the president and Trump administration officials talked about the battle against the coronavirus. And it all includes new weapons like sterilizing those N95 masks and rapid testing. But they all tell us that the worst is yet to come as the number dead reaches nearly 3,000. Over one million Americans have now been tested. It's a grim milestone in the fight against Thank the spread of the coronavirus. Illinois-based Abbott testing plans to roll out 50,000 tests each day starting this week, showing results in less than 15 minutes. Trump administration officials say it's a new weapon in the battle against COVID-19. Just like tests for flu or strep, where you go to the doctors, you get the test done, you can get an answer within minutes of having this test done. Nurses and doctors on the front line of the war against the virus are falling victim to it. We we have about 41 um, people in our hospital who have tested positive for the coronavirus. Because they say they don't have enough protective gear. We know how this is transmitted. We, we know that this is incredibly contagious and uh, we're, we're seeing it. We're being exposed over and over again. Companies like this one in Alaska are making face masks and other equipment to feed the need. And now the FDA says it has a plan. Sterilization machines. Each machine can disinfect 100 and 20,000 masks per day. It'll be just like a new one. It could go up to about 20 times for each mask. So each mask can go through this process 20 times. The nation's top infectious diseases expert says ultimately, the weapon most needed to defeat the coronavirus may be a vaccine that's already in the works. We have a vaccine that's on track and multiple other candidates. The next hot spot is expected to be Washington, D.C. and Virginia. Dr. Anthony Fauci says the coronavirus could come back this fall. He says it's very likely, but he hopes by then that there will be a vaccine on the market. In Washington, D.C., I'm Nadia Romero. Three federal judges are blocking restrictions placed on abortion access in Ohio, Alabama, and right here in Texas. The states place the limits on orders banning non-essential medical procedures. The states argued procedures like abortions dip into limited medical resources, but all three judges went against the order saying that delaying abortions could eventually make the patient ineligible for the procedure. And that, they say, places an undue burden on a woman's right to choose, making the restrictions unconstitutional. The judge here in Texas suggested the Supreme Court take up the issue. An Amazon worker was fired after he started a small protest against the company at a New York warehouse. Christian Smalls says that he wants Amazon to temporarily close the warehouse and disinfect the facility after an employee there tested positive for COVID-19. Now, Amazon claims Smalls was fired because he was on a 14-day paid leave after having contact with an employee who tested positive, and he put other employees at risk by attending the walkout. Airbnb helping out customers and hosts by allowing customers to cancel reservations without charge. As for the hosts who are losing out, CEO Brian Chesky pledged $250 million in order to offset refunds. In addition to that, a $10 million super host relief fund has been set up to offer grants to hosts in financial dire straits with rent or mortgage. And another automaker is stepping in to help the pandemic crisis by making much needed ventilators. Ford is hoping to manufacture 50,000 machines in 100 days at their Michigan plant. The company says it will produce a type of ventilator that only uses air pressure and does not require electricity. 639, 58 degrees. Bias is something that is learned according to new research. After the break, we're going to show you how you can act as a parent to prevent your child from learning your personal bias. Six forty-two. You teach your preschooler their ABCs, their one, two, threes, but can nonverbal signals from you teach them bias? David Sears has details on a new study that examines the origins of bias and how to tackle it head on. From infancy, kids mimic behaviors they see all around them. But when can some of those mimicked behaviors turn into social biases? When they have some sort of consciousness about what's white, what's black. They learn from what they see. Developmental psychologist Allison Skinner and her colleagues observed 283 kids ages three to five years old as they watched a video of two people interacting. One person was giving off positive nonverbal cues to another person. 
So more sort of like smiling, um, leaning in, warm tone of voice. And then that same person was giving off negative nonverbal cues to a different person, such as leaning away or using a cold tone of voice. The words were the same in both interactions. Hi. 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 Then the kids were asked who they liked best. The researchers found that kids acquired attitudes towards the people in videos based on those nonverbal cues. And the more the kids mimicked emotional expressions displayed toward the people in the video, the more likely their own attitudes matched those on the screen. They suggest that the nonverbal signals that kids are exposed to are really important and can have a pretty big impact on the attitudes that they acquire toward um, other people and other groups. Skinner says talking about the biases kids are exposed to can help children put nonverbal cues in perspective. Say things like, that wasn't very nice, why might that happen? Or, how do you think that made her feel? And help your kids empathize with different people. Some parents tend to avoid talking about race because they are concerned that they are going to create a bias as opposed to reducing it. But experts say if they don't say anything when they see something biased, then their kids won't have any reason to think that there's anything wrong with it. David Sears, KSA 12 News. It is exactly 645. Let's find out exactly what's happening on the roadways. We have exactly one major <laughs> accident, so we're kind of stuck on that word. But uh, let's move over to this accident here. Culebra at 410. So watch out for emergency vehicles. Uh, clearing that accident should be uh, cleared up fairly soon. And then we do have an area where we had a minor accident over on the east side. So let's go over to that trans guy camera. This is I-10 410 over on the east side. Should that have that wrapped up here shortly? The good news is if you take a look, they, we don't have a enough of a traffic flow for it to actually be causing a backup. So folks are cautiously making it past here. Don't forget folks, when you see those uh, flashing lights, you must slow down 20 miles an hour below the speed limit or vacate to the next available lane. Those things are not optional. No. Okay, thank you, Marcus. Yes, sir. April showers, as you said, bring May flowers. Mm -hmm. okay. You know what I've seen a, a lot lately hmm. is a lot of blue bonnet pictures. I don't know if it's because people are, are staying in and not you haven't seen a, a bunch we of them? Not, they're not getting them in. Haven't, haven't hmm. been getting as many on KSAC yeah. Connect. So, so folks, you, your assignment <laughs> <laughs> right. is aim the camera out the window and social, take pictures. Social distancing. However, do have some beautiful uh, wildflower pictures. And uh, oh my goodness gracious, that's absolutely gorgeous. That doesn't even look like a, a picture. It looks like a watercolor painting. That's great. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect uh, shot. And look at the uh, sunrise. We've got a couple of leftover clouds, obviously, off to the east, but then there's lots of clear skies in behind that. And these numbers literally have been changing every time that I've done a, a weather update. Castroville is now up to seven miles visibility. Port SA, because it was down to what, about a mile and three quarters or so, what, 10 minutes ago? 15 minutes ago. Now it's back up to six miles. Hondo is improving and New Braunfels was down to a half mile. That's now back up to four miles. So again, we're starting to see the drier air come in and get rid of the fog. Uvalde is up to a mile and a half. So it should continue to improve. And as the sun comes up, that will help to get rid of this fog as well. But just watch out for those couple little spots here and there in some of the low lying areas, especially 57 Rio Medina, Castroville 55 and 54 up the road in Bernie. Temperatures are still just a couple of degrees above normal, but closer to normal. And of course, yesterday we had all that humidity and now with the front moving on through here, that's pulling in that drier air and that will continue to be the case throughout the rest of the day. So we started off with dew points up in the 60s earlier this morning and the air has been drying out, of course, and it's going to remain very nice today as well as tomorrow. The dry air will stay in place, but notice how these wind lines then start to shift around to the south east and that's going to be later in the day tomorrow and that's going to help with the humidity coming back on in here so we stay fairly pleasant with dew points the next couple of days today and tomorrow great day today as well as tomorrow then the humidity comes back in here but at least that's going to help to feed uh, some of the uh, showers now as far as what's going to be going on kind of down the road first of all here's the uh, little bit of a front that has moved on through here we've got this slight northwesterly flow pulls in some dry air great weather around here and that's going to be the situation tomorrow and then this big trough starts to dig out there to the west as we go in Thursday through the weekend so we're going to continue to see more moisture not only down here at the surface with the surface winds out of the southeast but also aloft in the atmosphere and with this scenario and little disturbances they're going to be coming on in here that's going to give us the rain chances uh, probably the best chance in the 
midterm, I guess you could say, would be on Friday. But then even going into next week, it looks like a low is going to try and develop there. So maybe that will extend uh, some of the rain chances into the, at least the first half of next week. So today we're going to be up to 70 at noon. Plenty of sunshine out there. Good looking day. And then a high temperature today up to 80 north to northwesterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Really pleasant. So if you can get out and enjoy it today, tomorrow, another good looking day. Kind of a cool start down to 53 degrees. Get up to 79. Clouds are going to start to move in later on in the afternoon, especially tomorrow night. A couple of showers are possible on Thursday and probably the best chance of rain is going to be Friday and then Saturday. Little sunshine thrown in. But we'll still have some rain chances, I think, even through Monday of next week. We're kind of all over the place again. Warm, cool, moist, dry, flip flop back and forth. But again, today, great day to be outside. Same thing tomorrow. Good. Sounds good. Like a plan. Right now we are at 649, 58 degrees. One in five kids live with a parent who suffers from a severe depression, and that can have an adverse effect on kids as they grow up. Join us tomorrow in GMSA. We'll learn some ways to protect your child as they grow up. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up. Take a look at your screen. You can see how things have improved out there. We're going to have a beautiful sunrise on this last day of March. Coming up here on GMA, we are diving into the pandemic, and this morning, the governor of New York is putting out an SOS to the rest of the states, just asking for any help from healthcare workers as the overwhelmed hospitals see more and more patients. Top experts are predicting more hotspots in major cities across the nation. The commanding general from the Army Corps of Engineers will join us as they help build temporary hospitals with thousands of new beds. You'll see this coming up right here on GMA. The San Antonio Food Bank is answering the call for help in a big way, a mega food distribution event. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. We already have a long line of cars, people who are here waiting to take advantage of what is being offered. The Food Bank asked us to stress that pre-registration is required for this event. Anyone who wants to get food here has to sign up in advance. We're told that they are all booked up for today, but there may be some slots open for the event being held on Friday. You can pre-register through the Food Bank's website, which is there on your screen, or by calling them at 210-431-8326. The Food Bank is doing things differently now in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. It says that this pandemic has put a strain on its resources. They're now helping twice as many people as usual. They're also looking for volunteers to help with this event. You can head over to their website for more information. Reporting from the Alamo Dome, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right now, let's check traffic at about five till. Marcus. And as we take a look, uh, Mark and Leslie, at the accident that we do have, major accident. Uh, this one's 410 at Culebra, so watch out for emergency vehicles clearing that accident. Then we still have that minor accident over on the east side, I-10 410 there. Uh, that is a minor accident, but remember, flashing lights slow down 20 miles an hour below the speed limit or vacate to the next available lane. Mike. Thank you, sir. And take a look at live cam right now. Beautiful sunrise. Got a couple of leftover clouds, obviously, off there to the east and still some hints of fog. But these numbers have, have actually come up even in the past five minutes. So it is definitely getting on out of here. Uh, fog, you valley, that's kind of the thickest leftover. Five miles visibility right now in Pleasanton. Nice temperatures. We're at 57. Uh, if you are walking out the door this morning, you might want to grab a, just a light little jacket. But then a huge warm up throughout the day. 70 at noon, 80 for a high temperature with plenty of sunshine and we are going to have another day. Good looking day tomorrow. Then the clouds move in here and some rain chances Thursday, Friday, probably the best shot at rain, but we'll still have some uh, showers and thunderstorms around even going into the weekend and the uh, the first part of the week. And I don't know if I'm nervous about this, but waiting. You for look the, nervous. Uh, <laughs> you do look a little nervous. For There's the a test later. <laughs> pollen count because yesterday's oh, oak man. reading was 30,000. We should be approaching the end, though, shouldn't we, of the season? Yeah, Maybe. but it can't come soon enough. So. Well, and then we get the moisture coming in now and then. That keeps the mold levels up. Till, uh, so it's kind of a double-edged sword right now, isn't it, Mike? Right, but at least the dry air in here is going to keep molder, molder, mold molder. on the lower side. Oh, that's what it's really bad when it's called molder. <laughs> when it's called molder. Uh -huh. Scully and molder. Uh -huh. That's what I was thinking. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Oh, boy. See you tomorrow.